We already said chimneys, exhaust pipes and cow farts. So let's read these off and conclude this chapter on the emissions that we are producing out of chimney, out of the chimney. Sometimes it goes wrong, then all the lights suddenly go off, the computer stops working, the fridge stops buzzing and the heating slowly cools down. How long is this going to last, you wonder? But the Wi-Fi is not working either, so you can't find out, you can't Google it but outside. You see the street lights, the street cars and the traffic lights have given up too. Yep, it's definitely a real power outage you'd better light some candles depends on where you are but it is much more common in some places than others a hundred years ago this would never have happened the street lights were powered by gas and horses pulled the street cars and a police officer directed the traffic inside the wood fire was burning oil lamps provided light and there were no screens you will only know what that feels like if you ever experience the major power failure that lasts long enough and you have to light a candle you're used to using a button or a switch or a plug to turn on all kinds of devices the funny thing is that most of these machines are still actually powered by a steam engine of some sort the electricity in your wall socket comes from a power station and many power stations use coal to power a kind of a steam engine. Coal is ground up into powder and then burned inside a huge boiler of water. The gases that are left disappear through the filters and out of the chimney into the air. The coal burning is of course producing lots of things. The filters block all kinds of things but not the CO2. In fact, many of the little particles also get out of the chimney. Steam is created inside the boiler, of course, and that takes up much more room than water, as we said before, and so it wants to get out of this uh, boiler as quickly as possible. And with that power that it is pushing against, the steam drives a turbine, a wheel that turns a, s a kind of a super deluxe windmill right up to this point not much happens differently than a steam engine heat is converted into movement you are turning the turbine from the heat produced by burning coal now that movement just has to become electricity this happens in what is called a generator like a mechanical flashlight or a bicycle dynamo the generator converts movement into electricity. I don't know if you ever driven a bicycle with a dynamo. It would be a little gadget that attaches to the tire and as the tire rotates, it rotates and creates some motion inside and produces electricity for your little lamp on the bicycle. This electricity passes through all sorts of different stages to get to your house. You can see here a tall power uh, line and it's coming in from the grid and then sorry it's going this way or burning coal boiling waters creating steam driving the turbine and creating electricity then that's going off somewhere right so the electricity passes through all sorts of different stages to get to your house where all uh, where it calmly waits for you inside the wall socket as soon as you put it put in a plug the electricity starts to run through the cable and you can charge your phone turn on the TV turn on the computer the phone and all over the world there are tens of thousands of power stations like that but most of them are actually glorified steam engines the only difference is in the way the heat uh, they heat the water some of them do this without fossil fuels they can be powered by nuclear energy or geothermal energy but most burn coal gas or oil now we use the word renewable energy right and we are didn't quite say new renewable yet we say nuclear or geothermal energy and they are not fossil fuel which means you are digging out radioactive material from the earth and you are doing something at a nuclear level to produce nuclear energy 
and why is it different than fossil fuel because it's not emitting carbon dioxide or other greenhouse gases and geothermal energy is something you're taking out of the ground again not producing extra co2 but there are many details don't worry about it right now so this finally releases the carbon formed from trees ferns and dragonflies when we burn water in the boiler and dragonflies from 300 million years ago have been compressed in a swamp and waiting for us to burn it and send it off to its final destination of co2 together with this with some other gases the co2 goes through the chimney again and into the air that's the chimney story there and you can now see all the things we are using a hairdryer a television and this one is uh, an alarm clock an iron a phone a mixer a lamp and a candle is burning when everything goes out we're driving around in our nice cars and the computer is sitting there the washing machine and the heater and of course we are warming the water for showers and we are cooking things in an oven and we are mixing things battering things for a cake or we are vacuum cleaning the apartment and so on and so forth now we look at the exhaust pipe that is all coming out of here do you know the smell of the plane engine? You can sometimes smell them just as you are exiting the aircraft, particularly if you are leaving by the stairs. That smell is completely different from the smell of a cruise ship or the smell of a gas station. This is because the planes are powered by kerosene. Ships sail on fuel oil and most cars run on gasoline or diesel. All of those fuels are extracted from oil and that's not an easy task because that takes a lot of energy as well and you put a lot of that tar and exhaust into the water there is a bird that's suffering and eating uh, oil soaked fish and there is a fish that is hardly able to move there is a turtle and there is a crab that's dying because it says what is going on i cannot breathe right oil is dirty syrupy goo gloop that you can see here when it comes out of the ground as you can realize when you see some photographs of oil disasters for example when there is an explosion on a drilling rig uh, or when an oil tanker crashes into land somewhere and leaks a lot of oil into the water millions of liters of thick oil can flow into the sea you see pictures on the tv news of pelicans trapped in a thick layer of black grunge that you gunge that you can see here crabs peeping out of uh, above the oil and volunteers struggling to scrub the sea turtles clean from this black dirty gunge oil travels on ships along and along pipelines to oil refineries where the dirty gloop is converted into oil that goes into a car the oil is called crude oil because it's still a thick thick mixture that's not much good to anyone unless it's refined at the refinery they separate the various parts of the mixture by heating it there we are again needing energy you can take apart salty water in more or less the same way that I mentioned before about how the Middle East oil countries are getting their water put some salty water in a pan place it on the heat and allow the water to boil away until the salt crystallizes hold a spoon or something similar uh, in the steam let it cool and then you taste the drops of water no sign of salt but it's a bit more complicated than that and it happens inside a really tall boiler with all kinds of interesting pipes that move things out and leave water behind the lowest pipe here in the refinery pump fuel oil and diesel out of the boiler and the higher pipes bump, pump kerosene and gasoline this is because the boiler is hotter at the bottom than at the top the heaviest liquid stays at the bottom and the lightest fluid rises the highest to the top of this boiler okay different fuels have different qualities which means when you burn them different amounts of greenhouse gases come out gasoline is uh, handy if you want to start an engine quickly there's more energy in a liter of kerosene than in a liter of gasoline 
fuel oil is a less flammable than gasoline that is used on a ship that is why most cars run on gasoline because they want to crank the key and get the car started most planes fly on kerosene because they need more energy in the air they don't stop at every gas station and most ships sail on fuel oil because they are out in the ocean emitting into the atmosphere and not stopping at gas stations either so crude oil is going in here and various things are happening complicated system with colder thing at the top and the warmer thing here at the bottom with liquefied petroleum gasoline ca gas coming out here gasoline here kerosene here diesel here and fuel oil here and then bitumen is coming out here and here you are driving around happily to a picnic or so and you long exhaust coming out of the tailpipe right so these need fossil fuels to power the engine inside an engine little ex Explosions are constantly taking place to release the energy from any of these fuels in to turn the cylinders again. They happen because a mixture of air and fuel is ignited by a spark. The power of the explosion pushes a piston. Just like when you step on your bicycle pedal to push the pedal, there is gasoline fired hot air pushing against the piston. This sets the wheels or the propellers of the plane in motion or the engine on a ship burning the fuel finally sets free the carbon formed in the sea 200 million years ago out of shells and plankton and dragonflies together with some other gases the CO2 goes out through the exhaust pipe here and into the air. Ah, uh, let's read see should I read the cow as well yes I should because I mentioned it in the title we are at 11 12 minutes so let me continue a little bit because sometimes I don't want to make the podcast too long you may get tired so out of the cow what comes cows can look very innocent as they stand there and ruminating in the field they gaze a bit dozily into the distance looking as if butter wouldn't melt on in their mouths meanwhile they're contributing to climate change just as much as the average car well we have to be careful about this we are simplifying things just a little bit what do the cows do they do this by emitting not co2 but methane one of the other major greenhouse gases methane is about 25 times stronger than co2 as i said before luckily it doesn't hang around in the air as long we said co2 can stay in the air for one century two century three centuries but methane burns out in about 10 years methane is in natural gas in the swamps as we mentioned before and in the cow burps as well their burps are much worse than their farts but when cow poo begins to rot it also releases a whole load of methane the cows burp so much methane because they have four stomachs not one okay they use those stomachs to digest the grass they eat like a refinery that's moving from one tank to another the grass contains a lot of carbon all kinds of bacteria help out during the digestion through these four stomachs and some of them make methane gas out of the grass in the stomachs of cows there are bacteria producing methane cows burp out the methane and they don't even say excuse me well we are using the cows for milk and cheese and yogurt and we are chopping them up and eating them as steak now it's not really the cow's fault either because it's not even the fault of the bacteria it's because the people eat so many hamburgers and drink so much milk otherwise there wouldn't be nearly as many cows look at the milk here and the uh, uh, cereals we are eating the burgers and the milkshake and so on otherwise there would not be as many cows now there are nearly as many sheep or goats in Montana there are more cows than people because they are pretty gra gassy too such as these sheep and goats all ruminants which are animals that have a complicated digestive system with a three or four chambered stomach are champion burpers in fact that includes camels giraffes deer and all other rest of these ruminants 
but there are a billion cows on the planet and that's because humans breed so many of them burping beasties are not the only bad guys of agriculture the bacteria that make methane are crazy about the rice fields too that's where around a quarter of the methane in the atmosphere comes from some scientists even say that climate change began when people started to cultivate rice some 8000 years ago amounts of methane found in the ice bubbles in the air you know uh, air bubbles in the ice sorry from that time seems to indicate that this is the case so we domesticated the wild rice and started to grow it in larger and larger quantities as population kept growing and then there is another thing beyond rice lot of land is needed to grow food and to keep animals and to grow food for those animals as well more and more land in, th in fact because there are more and more people now and eating more and more and wasting more 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 and more and those people are getting richer and richer and they want to eat more and more that's why chainsaws are ringing out in the tropical woodland and why forests are blazing away forest fires sorry are blazing away millions of trees have been felled to make more room for agriculture for soybeans for instance shown here which are used in soybean oil soy sauce and often used to feed the cattle to make them nice and healthy to give you more milk and produce more hamburgers felling trees creates a double problem the carbon in the wood goes into the air as co2 and fewer trees remain to take up the co2 back out of the air a dead tree is not photosynthesizing anymore look at all the things we are doing kids here are the poor animals who have evolved to survive by eating grass and vegetation and there are flies eating stuff out of the cow dung and there are little cow dung beetles that are eating things the elephants are serving their purpose cows are serving their purpose the giraffe and camel and so on and we started eating these and drinking their milk and making cheese and ice cream and milkshake and now we want more and more cows and then we say oh my god cows are farting and burping and they are producing methane whose fault is it of course not the cows right so we'll come back and talk a little bit about melt water and heat waves so we're going to start talking about the impacts of all this climate change we are creating by burning fossil fuels okay this is almost 18 minutes but it's a nice long story so please listen we're moving to the next chapter then okay